What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thank you to the guys over at Sahara, we're taking a look at their CR500 case. Now, Sahara are a brand that have been around for a little bit now, um, relatively still new to the market. Um, products imported from Taiwan, basically their main products at the moment are a, a few RGB fans and a few cases. We've actually taken a look at a couple of theirs in the past and yeah, they were okay. So we have here the CR500. Um, the CR500 is available in two options. They actually sent me effectively both options to take a look at. It's the same case, but you can either buy it with three 140mm uh, fans or four 120s. Um, we'll get into how they all fit a little bit later on. But this is the case. It is a standard full-sized ATX case. And if I just take off that side panel, as you can see, it is tempered glass on the side, on the front, and the back panel, which we'll take a look at, look at a little bit later, is also tempered. So, as I, as you can see, um, relatively smooth sides. There's no screws or anything on the side, as you see quite often. Same again on the front, all nice and smooth. It's quite a clean looking design. Um, I do quite like it. So we'll, we'll start off with taking a look around the outside. So you've seen this at this side. The front panel, if I bring it over to you, complete solid slab of glass. Um, top and bottom, it looks like metal. It's not, it is actually just a sticker. Um, relatively decent amount of airflow at the sides here. I can actually get my hand clean in so the fans aren't luckily butt up against the case. It would be nice if, uh, I'll just turn it around to show you. Um, you can see where the glass panel comes here. Now I can actually get my finger down here. It would have been nice if this completely square panel maybe wasn't completely square. But that inco incurs a lot of extra cost in having cut panels of different shapes so I understand it is a budget case why they haven't done that but maybe it would have been just a nice little inclusion so front solid glass if I just tip the case up there we will take a quick look at the top so we do have a magnetic dust filter attached here which at the moment has got a pair of 140 mm fans in it you can also put 120s in but you, it does give you plenty of options there for your AIO You've got your front I.O. which consists of a single USB 3, a pair of USB 2s, standard uh, front audio of headphone and microphone, uh, a button for the LEDs, a reset, a power button and your power and activity LEDs. Um, front I.O. I must admit is a bit lacking considering it is now 2020. A single USB 3 and a pair of USB 2s? Why? Um, the one connector for USB 3 always gives you two. Um, why, why only a If it was the other way around, I could understand. If it was a pair of USB 3s and a single USB 2, okay. But a single USB 3 in this day and age, that's not really good enough. And then, if we take a quick look at this side, again, very similar to the other side. It's actually a much darker tinted panel. There is actually a difference between them. This panel is a much heavier tint. And then if we look at the back, on the back, it's a typical affair. Power supply at the bottom, standard seven piece express, IO shield and a 140 or 120 mil at the back. I have a 140 mounted in there at the moment. So while I've got the case, like this and you can see it I will show you how the power comes off it comes off a little bit different so a pair of thumb screws come out and you think okay panel's gonna pop off but it doesn't you actually have to push that little button there and then the panel just pops out a little bit for you and then you can pull it out and put it back and that is the side panel which has got a light tint, tint to it nothing too dark or anything like that and now we can take a look at the inside of said case. So as I mentioned, it is a standard ATX case. We do have a PSU shroud at the bottom here, a little cutout to view your power supply. Overall though, on the inside, relatively mediocre. Nothing amazing about it. You've got space for a couple of 120s again on the top here. I 
getting really bothered with those ones. You do have your three 120s or two 140s in the front. You've got your options at the top and the back here. Plenty of fan, fan options though, decent amount of airflow. I do also have one of their Sahara Gaming uh, CPU coolers. We'll take a discussion about that a little bit later. Um, overall though, from this side, everything's relatively clean. There is some uh, honeycomb cutouts on the top here. There was a decent amount of cable routing. There's actually a few holes at the bottom here, which I did like because it meant that my, my graphics card come out of one, USBs came out of the other, and then that irritating HD audio that normally has to trail right the way along the bottom had its own little cutout. I did find though, weirdly, front I.O. cables were actually, well, that is literally all there is for the uh, front audio. It literally just about reached. To be fair, I have routed it a longer way, but it was still a bit, it's a little bit tight. So from this side of things, yeah, it's looking pretty decent. If we take a look now at the other side, which we will do. Now this side of the case is literally a simple case of a pair of thumb screws. And then the panel will just come out and pull back. As you can see, this side panel is much, much heavier tinted. It does mean that, although it is a tinted glass panel, it just hides the mess of cable management that you put behind it. So, coming at the case from this side, it's a relatively standard affair. Nice, good sized motherboard cutout. You do have a couple of holes at the top here for your cabling to get through. Getting the 8-pin PS um, CPU through the top here was a pain. Because if you, if you, I don't know if you can see, basically the PCB for the motherboard is actually a little bit higher than the bottom of this hole. So although it's a relatively decent sized hole, the PCB for the motherboard does cover up quite a bit of it. Um, it would actually be easier to run your 8-pin power supply cable before you put the motherboard in, but nobody does that. Okay, so then we've got a decent sized channel down here to put all of your cables and everything in. I must admit this was a quick put it together system rather than something I've spent hours and hours cable managing, but it still looks relatively decent. Um, unfortunately, the power supply I've used is a bit weird when it comes to cabling and the 8-pin CPU on it was incredibly short and weirdly also tied up in the middle of the cables for the 24-pin. Don't know, don't ask. But yeah, the cable management on it was pretty decent. Plenty of tie down points. This nice little routing channel here I did quite like. And this little thing with buttons here is the party piece of this case, shall we call it? Um, that is the controller for the fans. You do also get a remote control for it. And what it is, all of the fans in this case are a little proprietary six pin job, okay? So they're a proprietary six pin, so you can't just plug any RGB fans into it. And what it is, all of the fans in this case, including the CPU fan, are plugged into this controller. You can have a maximum of 10 fans plugged into this. This controller is then connected via a small cable, uh, this one, um, which then goes to your motherboard, and that is your speed control, and then this one here goes to your, no so I've got that the wrong way around, this one here is for your RGB lighting, okay so it syncs with your motherboard, this one here is PWM control for your fan speeds, so your fan speeds can be controlled by your BIOS on your motherboard should it support it. On to that, I will say you will need it. So let's plug it in and take a quick look at said LED fans. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's not that quiet. Now, there is a few different buttons on this remote control. I hope you can still hear me. One of them includes fan up and fan down. Uh, that's the, there's basically high and low. There is no option to sort of slow them down much more than that. And weirdly, it's these top 
RGB fans which make the noise. So I'm just going to unplug them and we'll get back to, to discussing. Okay, so there we go. The case is now just running on the 120s and the CPU. And it's much quieter. It's strange. These 140s, they shift a massive amount of air. But unless you can PWM control them and reduce the RPM on them down, down on them massively, they're incredibly noisy. Running on just the 120s, it's, I mean, bear in mind we've got no side panels on, it's audible but not intrusive. Now you do have, as I mentioned earlier, the remote control. It's not um, infrared or anything like that, it is actually an RF ID, an RF remote control. Um, and you press the buttons, you get your options, you can just press the motherboard sync. Um, I don't know what this particular ASRock board is currently set to, but it just seems to go sort of like in and out of white. Um, uh, and you've got your, your typical options, you've got lots of different cycles of things, and you can change your LED speeds, and you, you've got the different modes, and you can have it sit there and do things. But yeah, there's plenty of options. You can also, he says, unlock. Turn them off. So if you don't like your RGB, you can turn them off. So, like I said, for some strange reason, these 140s do appear to be incredibly noisy, but you don't have to have the 140s. You can choose the 120s, so you'll get four 120s, so you'd have three at the front and one at the back. Um, I think that would be my preference. Like I said, I don't know why these 140s appear to be so loud. They just shift a massive amount of air, though. So. That's really the major things about this Sahara gaming case. It's got pretty decent airflow, um, but, and this is the big but, my problem with this case is a bit on the pricing. Now, it's 80 quid with the fans, which, yeah, okay, not bad. The problem is, from... Uh, from a brand like Sahara, which as much as they do seem to be putting out some decent products now, that's a lot of money. Now, you can go look on the likes of eBay and even a lot of the major stores, and you'll find a tempered glass side case with a, a few, maybe not quite so fancy fans, but a few lighty up fans for half the price. Um, these fans, although they are pretty cool, they do have a lot of options, um, and you may want all those options. They it, these fans do make them expensive. I mean, the fans are ten pound each plus the controller. Um, does make them a bit pricey, and obviously, well, half of this case's value is in fans. If the case was forty quid with a couple of fans in it, it would be a bargain. But it's not. It does work out a little bit expensive. Um, but it it is good. I do like the style. It's well made. There's no sharp corners or anything like that. Um, it is a good solid case. If Sahara Gaming were a big brand, um, if they were a Corsair, yeah, they would get away with it. Unfortunately, they're not. Will they be in the future? Maybe. But at the moment, they're not. Um, but the case overall, it is good and it will probably end up being on sale at some point, at which point it will probably be a bit of a bargain. So there is one other thing we do need to discuss about this case and that is this CPU fan. Now this is a CPU fan that the guys over at Sahara sell. Come on, spin again. Um, it will connect with your Sahara gaming controller for the RGB and everything. Um, it is PWM controlled. They did give it to me to review, but honestly, unless you have one of their cases and their controllers already, and you have a low-powered CPU, and you genuinely just don't have a cooler and want some RGB lights, I wouldn't bother. Um, it is a rather basic sort of flower pot aluminium fin thing, no heat pipes or anything. Um, all aluminium construction, relatively cheaply made. Yes, it does have the RGB sync on it, um, but it is cheap. It's only rated at a TDP of 65 watts, um, so it's not 
massively powered you won't be putting any decent processor underneath it so like i say unless you genuinely need rgb lighting on your cpu and do not own a cooler and already have one of their controllers because if you don't have a controller you do also have to buy that separately forget about that cooler uh, yes it does look quite cool unfortunately the performance doesn't match it and i think it's about 18 quid so it doesn't break the bank no um, if you're building a really budget system and happen to somehow, I don't know, if you spend 80 quid on a case on a budget system, you won't be spending 20 quid on a cooler because 80 quid case isn't a budget system really, not anymore. Um, so yeah, the, the cooler didn't impress me. Um, there's, it wouldn't even cool my standard test bench, so there was no point. I, I couldn't give you any comparisons. It's a cheap basic cooler that has a flashy light up light but the c500 on the other hand although a little bit pricey was impressive it's well built it's got a nice design it's well thought it's better thought out than some more expensive cases that i've currently got sitting here to review which i did like um, there's no major cross compatibility issues you do have a decent option for your cooling. You can put an AIO in the front. You can put an AIO on the top. Um, okay, there's, there is space for a 360 AIO in the front as long as your hose is long enough to still reach your CPU. Um, but yet you can put 240s and 280s in the top up to a 360 or a 280 in the front. Um, there is a nice exhaust fan there. It, like I said, it is well made. The, the steel is pretty decent. It's all... Um, folded over so it's it is sturdy you could probably stand on top of it um, but there we go guys that is the Sahara C500 for today I quite liked it um, would I buy one possibly like I say you could either spend a bit less and lose some of the RGB features or spend a bit more and get a major branded cases case should we say so it, it's entirely up to you. If the RGB is what you're looking for, then picking up uh, one of the Sahara bundles with all the fans and everything does make for relatively decent value for money. And this thing, I'll just grab that side panel just to show you. Oh, I also quite like the fitment of the side panel. That little thumb thing to push the panel out. This thing with all of those RGB lights and everything on it, it does look rather cool. But there we go guys, so as always I'm going to put some links down below as to where you can buy one of these. Any questions, suggestions or comments do leave them down below, I always try and take the time to go and view them, uh, go and, view them and answer any questions. And if you've liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. As always if you want to see more of me, click the subscribe button, click that little notification bell and I'll be back again soon. Thank you very much, bye for now.